Hi there farmers, it's your farm girl KE and I'm devoted, very much devoted to making your agribusinesses succeed. So I promised you that I'm going to be finishing the video on uh, passion fruit farming and today we are going to be looking at fertilizer application, pruning, pests and diseases, harvesting and what we can use to intercrop our passion fruits with and when. Stick around. Remember to subscribe, comment, share, like, you know, share with your friends so that you can know what they can do to their passion fruit, improve their productivity at the end of the day. If you didn't watch the last video on uh, passion fruit farming, make sure you click on this link up here to catch up with what we are going to talk about today. So on to the video. So today we are going to talk about fertilizer application. Uh, when you're doing your passion fruit farming, you need to understand why and when you need to apply your fertilizers. One, there is phosphorus. Phosphorus is applied for you to help the plants to develop their roots. There is nitrogen. Nitrogen is help, helps the plant to grow that strength in the vines and also in the leaves. There is also calcium. Calcium is very effective in uh, improving the quality of the end product, which is the fruits in our case. So during the planting period, you need to understand what your plants require. How do you do this? By doing a soil test. A soil test will help you to know what is already existing in your soil and what you need to add so because you might go there in uh, blindly you add nitrogen and yet the soil has enough nitrogen you add phosphorus and that your soil has enough phosphorus for you to avoid these mistakes you need to learn what your soils have so you can buy a testing machine which is going to help you know the right amounts to measure to measure the right amounts and you know what you're going to be adding or you can do soil test with a company that does soil testing and this is going to be a little bit costly but it is going to give you the best results so you might consider doing the soil testing if you have the money however if you do not have any money to do the soil testing or to buy the soil test kit as at the time of your planting do not worry you can buy chicken manure goat manure and cow manure which you're going to be adding to the holes of the that you have drilled for your uh, passion fruits make sure that you wet that place if it is not raining so that that soil and the manure will be able to mix properly such that by the time you're coming to introduce your seedling it is going to find a ready place for it to continue thriving so make sure that you wet that place and if it is not raining do it a day before if you're going to be planting tomorrow make sure today you have added the manure so that they can mix them with the soil and then tomorrow it will be ready to transplant secondly the reason for doing this it is going to help your plants you know manure sometimes has gas which can burn the roots so for you to avoid this make sure that you do it the day before after you have planted that you have watered your, your passion fruits the next uh, period that you're going to be adding your manure is after three months after three months you come again with your cow manure you goat manure and your chicken manure you add at the root base of your plant do not add directly at the root remember we added the fertilizers a day before so this time because the plant is already existing in the um, uh, soil you're going to be adding around it 30 centimeters apart so that you do not burn the roots in this case you will be adding a handful if you're going to be using the dap or the fertilizers that has been uh, prepared in the market you know they are organic fertilizers that you can use you add a handful you just scoop like this with your hand you put it around and that is it if you're going to be adding manure this time you're going to be adding a lot more manure you just add a bucket of manure you put it around the plant and that will be it for the plant to keep growing and also remember that if you're going to be using the chicken cow and uh, goat manure it is very vulnerable to nematodes and pests that are soil borne so for you to avoid this soil borne especially the grubs make sure that you spray with pesticides and nematicides at the time of application or just a day before application when you spray your nematicides and your pesticides a day before you have prevented the plant from getting these uh, illnesses and from getting uh, from being attacked by pests at 
uh, during the growth period and it is going to give you a better yield at the end of the day so you're going to be applying your fertilizers in stages during the planting period you add manure with more phosphorus this is for root development after three months you add the fertilizers with more nitrogen this is for the vine development and the leaves development after the other three months so you'll be adding the manure after every three months after the first day of planting so after the third during the third application period make sure that your manure has a lot of uh, high calcium so that you can increase the development of the flowers the manure should also contain boron which is also going to help in the flower development and it is going to help in the reducing flower drop off you know there is a major challenge in uh, passion fruit farming when it comes to flowers dropping off and you know when a flower drops off it is a fruit that has gone it is a profit that has gone so you need to avoid this always remember that the productivity of your passion fruits depends entirely on how you're going to take care of the fruits or the vine itself prune unwanted leaves the leaves that have holes and the leaves that are yellow in color these are the leaves that are sick they are the leaves that have been affected by the pests and if you remove them on time you're going to protect the healthy ones from uh, being attacked and getting the diseases remove the unwanted branches these are uh, the branches that are going to be you know popping off the vines that you're going to allow to reach to the galvanized wire or to the net if you're using the net you're going to allow three vines if you're using the galvanized wire you're going to use two vines so there is one that is moving to this side and there is another one moving to this side so that way if there are branches that are popping up at the sides uh, make sure that you remove those because they are very heavy feeders and they are going to eat up the crops uh, the nutrients that you are going to you put up in the manure of the fertilizers that you're going to use also the fruits are going to remove tendrils these are going to tie up and you do not want to your passion fruit to look like a forest or something you want it to have the uh, aeration good enough for it to produce pro for passion fruits effectively so make sure that you remove those trend reels the major pests and diseases that affect the passion fruits are fruit flies mealybugs aphids spider mites soil bone diseases so for you to avoid all of these, make sure that you spray pesticides. Uh, if you're going to be doing organic farming, there are pesticides that have been approved by the organic uh, organizations in your country. For example, in Kenya, there is Juanco and Botanical chemical combination from uh, Osho chemicals. There are others from organics uh, like Achuk. You spray your pesticides every week. After you have planted your passion fruit, the following week spray your pesticides keep spraying every week especially during the sunny period if you're living in a place that it is very sunny and it is very hot and warm this environment encourages the growth and the reproduction of many pests like the aphids the mealybugs spray in the morning or very late in the evening this is going to ensure that you do not scorch your plant leaves you know with too much pesticides